Welcome back to the Nitty Gritty Real Estate Podcast. Today we're talking about costs are rising to buy a home, but it's actually still a good time to buy. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nitty Gritty Real Estate Podcast. I'm here with Tom Krieger and I'm Joe Brown with the Tom J. Krieger team. With Keller Williams Southern Arizona, I should add, that is our brokerage. Um, so people are seeing all of these costs going up to mm-hmm. buy a home. Yep. And a lot of them are getting scared. Mm-hmm. A lot of buyers are getting scared. We have rising interest rates along with that. Yep. However, we did a podcast just recently on inflation rates and interest rates. Correct. What is that looking like? I know we, we sort of outlined it a little bit and we wanted to make that point again in this podcast over our, our tips as to why it is a good time to buy. So illuminate us on that a little bit. You know, mortgage rates are what you pay to borrow money to control a big asset, right? What do you, what skin do you have in the game? Your small asset could be 5% of savings, 10%, uh, 20%, whatever you use for the down payment. But the big asset is what you're controlling. Now, a mortgage rate in the past has been pretty low in the last four or five years. It, we almost got down to 2.5%. Historically. Yeah, yeah, historically, it, it's low. Now it's been creeping up. But it still is a good time to invest in a product that is appreciating at around 8%, 9% right now. Mm-hmm. When you're only using about 10% of the money to, con- to own that piece of property. So you're paying interest on 10%. You're not paying interest on the whole home. Okay. 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 That makes sense. So if not to get too much into the weeds, yeah. but we'll use simple numbers. If I'm paying 5% interest on 10% of the value of the home, okay, mm-hmm. I am not um, hurting. But if I'm paying 5% interest on 90% of the home and no interest on the 10% that I've in, I've used to buy the house, mm-hmm. that's a significant amount of money. Don't forget, though, that the house itself is growing in value faster and with a greater interest rate than what you're paying to borrow that money for that big asset. So the interest rate for the borrowed money is less than the interest that the home is appreciating. Is appreciating. Yeah. Right. Okay. So 10% for a home appreciation, 5% to borrow the money. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. You're making money that way. In addition, you're using 10% of the value of that property as down payment collateral you're buying down, though, in your monthly payments, some of the principal in the house, okay? Right. So the value of the house is going up. The amount of debt owed to the house is falling because you're making monthly payments. Now, we all know on a mortgage, it's not a lot in the beginning, right? Yep. You get the payment schedule when you, you close. You get the payment schedule when you close. <laughs> exactly correct. Um, let's take it on the other side. You know, house prices are high. Interest rates high for borrow money. I've got $10,000 in the bank. I don't want to use that $10,000 for down payment because I won't have any reserves. So I'm, I'm just going to rent, right? Mm-hmm. So you're renting. Next year, your rent goes up. The value of the house you want to buy goes up. Next year, your rent goes up. Next year, your value of your house goes up. Next year, your rent goes up. Next year, the value of the house goes up. Do you see what you're doing? You're chasing the dog you can never get close to. Yeah. So buying it yes. makes more sense than renting yes. it. Yes. If your $1,000 a month rent goes up 5%, that's $1,050 a month. Mm-hmm. If your $500,000 house goes up 5%, that's 25000 M- It makes much more financial sense. Yes. So it's always a good deal, if you can, to own real estate. And that, that is our next point, rent versus owning. Um, so that, that's, a, I think, a big um, difference between the generational wealth that you can create when you own, when you pass on something like that to your children, an appreciating asset that you could pass on, or nothing. Right. 
you know, there, you have, you have wealth built up through that. And that's what generational wealth means. It gets passed down to your, your kids. Mm -hmm. So yes, don't rent. Yes. If you can, have, if you, if you are able to do it, go buy a house. Don't, exactly. don't rent. Yeah. Most wealthy people own homes. Yeah. A lot of people have, a lot of wealthy people have made their egg yes. through real estate. Yeah. Warren Buffett yeah. made most of his money through owning homes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the, a lot of people talk about the, the advantage of tax um, by owning a house and, and writing off the mortgage interest and the taxes and all that. Yeah. You know, the federal government has been giving more and more standard deductions so that right now, uh, it's almost better to take the standard deduction because you don't have enough deductions to get to that standard deduction. Sure. Now, I'm not a tax advisor, yeah. okay? I'm not an accountant. But if you just kind of add these things up in your, you know, on a piece of paper, you'll start to see that the mortgage interest may not be as great of a tax um, issue as it used to be. So they wanted to remove the mortgage deduction yeah. aspect of it, right? And I think what they did is by increasing the standard deduction, they've really done away with that. Now what is concerning to me, uh, and you may have heard it here first or maybe on some other conspiracy channel, <laughs> I have a feeling they're going to start reducing the standard deduction after they phase out totally mortgage interest because people are going to realize the standard deduction is more than my mortgage interest. Yeah, you can wipe that away. I'm not going to I'm not going to protest in the streets. Yeah. Once they remove that, now they bring that mortgage deduction down or just leave it flat while inflation takes over. Mm -hmm. It's it's a way for them to get the the mortgage interest out of the tax code. That's what I believe is going to happen. Now, they may take 3, 5, 10 years. Yeah. But I believe that's what's going to happen. And another thing I wanted to bring up with the, the mortgage tax deduction, and be sure to talk to your CPA on this. Yeah. Um, tax advisors. The tax advisors are very important, uh, but you could have the potential to write off if you are buying down points. Yep. That is interest that you're buying down. And you may have the opportunity to uh, write that off as well. So exactly. be sure to talk to your tax person if you recently bought a home and did that which a lot of people have recently because of the rising interest mm -hmm. rates. They tried to buy down the points to get the lowest interest rate possible. Right. Now, Joe, I want to, before you go on to your next point, I also want to uh, uh, let people know that of the last six recessions that we've had, okay, and people, we are in a recession right now. It's mm -hmm. not official, but I'm telling you we're in a recession right now. We just had the um, CPI come out at 8.6%. They didn't think it was going to be that high. They thought it was going to be 8.3. It's still climbing, and it's going to climb till the election. So in the last six recessions, four of them, house prices rose. Two of them, they didn't rise. One, obviously, was the recession of 2008. That was just... That was the big one that killed everything. That was the black storm. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We don't expect the um, black swan storm to come into this cycle right now. But the other one was interesting was 1991. Yeah. Okay. And that one, we went through a recession. It was right before Bill Clinton became president. House prices dropped 1.4%. Here's the interesting thing. 1.4% back then when the average home price was about 65,000, wasn't a lot of money. 1.4% now, when the home prices are 400,000 is a little bit more, right? Yeah, yep. It's about seven times more. Yep. But still the value of the home is still there. Yeah, okay? sure. Um, I would rather gamble on four out of six than be afraid of two out of six. Yeah, I, th I think your mindset's correct there. And we just don't see the we just don't see the numbers there. You know, there's so much equity in people's houses. There's so much cushion that is built up there that um, we don't, we won't see a 50% decrease overnight. No, no, we won't see that. But, but people, uh, you know, I hear this because I'm out in the public all the time. I hear this. Well, you know, how, how high house prices go? Yeah. We got to have a pullback. We got to have a pull. Why do we have to have a pullback? Yeah. 
you know, because you feel we should have a pullback doesn't mean that we are going to. Right. Understand the underlying issues with what's in the marketplace, and you will definitely realize that prices of homes are not going to fall. There's just too much demand and not enough inventory. Yep. Yep. And yep. and so with but but with the rising interest rates, are we going to see more inventory? No. You don't think you don't think that the rising interest rates pushing out more buyers, we're going to see a little longer wait time on homes so that just because they're not going to sell overnight, which a lot of sellers think is going to happen, that they're going to get over asking and it's going to sell within hours. Do you see that happening with the rising interest rates? Hey everyone, we want to interrupt this episode to let you know that we are a Keller Williams Southern Arizona franchise. We are also realtors practicing equal housing. Now let's get you back to the podcast. No, I don't. I don't really. Um, and here, let me tell you why. I own a house. I got a two and a half percent interest rate. My house just went up. I get fifty-five percent equity in my house. Why do I want to sell it and go out and get a five and a half percent note? Yeah. See, this is what the Fed's trying to do: slow down the velocity of money. So, because there won't be that money, mo- that much in houses out there. I mean, there's going to be a little bit more of inventory, but it's not going to be like. Uh, a lot of inventory, like a normal market, we're not going to see that for a long time. Yeah. Okay. The Fed is going to crush this economy and they're going to stop inflation and they're going to slow down the rising of home prices till they get down to like three to 5%, which is probably a year or two. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to try to do. I think we are going to have a very hard landing here. Yeah. And I think that you're going to see the stratification of have nots and haves Mm -hmm. when it comes to the housing industry. The have nots are going to be renting and there's going to be so much demand on rental properties that there won't be enough of them and you will start seeing municipalities, builders, the real estate industry look to how are we going to house these people? Mm -hmm. Are we going to take four bedroom colonial homes and turn them into four bedroom one bedroom rentals four one bedroom rentals yeah right, right i'm starting to see that right now instead of renting to a family because the rent is twenty nine hundred dollars they can't afford it mm-hmm. they're going to rent out each bedroom for eight hundred dollars and they're going to get thirty two hundred dollars for that four bedroom house right yeah okay? so i don't really see the inventory growing that fast what I do believe is that we are going to see the demand for housing increase. Yeah. But the inventory isn't going to, in, and the builders cannot keep up. Yeah. We're 5 million homes behind what we really need in the United States, and the builders can't build them that fast. So we need some alternatives to housing people is what you're getting yes, at. I really <laughs> would like to see the builders you know, use some common sense instead of trying to line their pocketbooks with all these fancy types of things. Why aren't you building you know, next-generational homes where mom and dad can stay with, okay? Yeah, and it could be... Or a, vice versa. Right? Mom and dad have a smaller home where the new young married couple could live. Mm-hmm. On property. On property, yeah. right? There are a lot of ethnicities that build on one house. Yeah. If you go to the Middle East, you'll see that. My trips to Israel, um, we would see in the more Arab-populated parts of uh, Israel, there'd be the first house, and then there was an add-on because this son or daughter got married, and then there was an add-on because that what son or daughter got married. And then there was an add-on because gr- mom and dad couldn't. And then there was an add-on because grandpa now is is got grandkids and those grandkids are getting married. Multi-generational housing. Multi-generational houses by just adding to them, right? Sure, yeah. Because there's so much area out there, they can, they can do that. Yeah. Why aren't we building those types of homes, right? Yeah, yeah, that th- makes sense. Yeah. So we're a little off topic there, and I apologize for that, but... What, what we're trying to say is that if you buy a house now, you are not going to regret buying a house now. Yep. Hire the right real estate agent. Make sure you don't overpay. Don't get stuck with a pig in a poke, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Three years from now, four years from now, five years from now, you're going to go, man, it's the best decision I made. Think about this. When the pandemic hit? March. February, March. March 20. Right? Yeah. Okay, let's say the pandemic hit in March of 20. Yeah. 
And what if you'd have bought a house then? You went through a pandemic. You went through a supply chain deal. You went through an election. You went through all this bad stuff. And how much more is your house worth? At least 50%. Yep. You weathered the storms at you, the right time. Yeah. You were out in a in a luxury cruiser and you didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. Boy, that is so true. Yeah. I don't, again, I don't see any decrease in the value as a house is coming. Yep. They're not going to appreciate at the speed they were. They are going to decelerate the appreciation, mm -hmm. but they're still going to appreciate. There's still just too much demand out there, Joe. Yeah. 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 Well, um, some, some good and, stuff. And there. rates are still going to go up. Just yeah. be aware of that. And, yeah. and, and I've said this in past past podcasts. I bought my first house, 18% I paid for a mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But it was 18% for 65000 Yes. Rather than our 400 percent for a million, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's a, hopefully we don't hit those numbers. I don't think it would be possible yeah. to even afford a house really at exactly. that, those numbers and these days. We're not going to get to those numbers here, okay? But also realize this too. The average wages went up 5.5%. Now, yeah. inflation went up. 8%, 9% right in there. So you're you're still behind the eight ball, but you're not that far behind the eight ball. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's not ever increasing. And it's still a percentage, if you understand the percentages, right? Yeah. So your wage goes up, your income year over year goes up five and a half percent. What does five and a half percent buy you at five and a half percent interest rate, right? So if you make a hundred thousand dollars, you get an extra five and a half thousand dollars on your income. How much more can you borrow with $105,000 of income versus $100,000? And then that borrowing power, what does that translate into a payment? Right. So we've said this before, and I'm, I, I love the point that you made, that today's dollars are worth more than tomorrow's dollars. Absolutely. Especially in this these crazy inflationary times we're yes. seeing. Yeah. So... Again, do it now. Buy now because it's the cheapest time to do so. Yeah. And even with higher uh, mortgage interest rates that we're seeing, adjusted for inflation, they're still quite low. Yeah. And rents are not going down. No. And and they will not. Yeah. So, well, thank you guys for listening. I know that we might have gone on some tangents there, but it was, uh, I think, an interesting podcast, at least for us. Uh, we will talk to you on the next one. Thank you for listening and watching the Nitty Gritty of Real Estate podcast here with the Tom J. Krieger team of Keller Williams, Southern Arizona. If you are interested in buying a home, selling a home, or even investing in real estate, we have 5,000 agents across the country that we can connect you to. If you need any free resources, feel free to check out our website at www.thetjkteam.com. We hope you have a great day.